The Sioux Tina Nation. They reside outside the southwest of Calgary. Their band number is 432, their population 1,835, and their current chief is Lee Crowchild, although they are currently in the electoral process of finding a new chief. The Tsutina Nation was originally part of the Dene people of Northern Canada, residing mainly in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Alaska. The origin story of the Tsutina people. One myth tells of many Dene nations crossing an ice field. A little boy begs his grandmother to pull out an animal horn that is protruding from the ice. The ice breaks apart and sends the Tsutina people far south. Another origin story tells of a neighboring Dene chief's dog killing the child of the Sutina chief. The Sutina chief kills the chief's dog, and the Sutina people are forced to leave the area, so they head south. As a tribe now separate from the Dene people, the Sutina nation traveled south to Alberta and into parts of the northern United States. Some oral traditions even state that they went as far south as Mexico. The Tsutina people were mainly migratory, following the bison as a main resource in their traditional hunting area of southern Alberta. Due to the nomadic lifestyle of the Tsutina people, their clothing, belongings, and teepees would need to be multi-purpose and light. Teepees traditionally only housed a few adults at a time. Beaver Hill. This area, now located near a major conservation park, used to be a major hunting ground for the buffalo, a place for peaceful resolution, and a place for hand games. As the Tsutina people spoke an Athabascan dialect, they required a translator but did not have one. From what they could understand from the Blackfoot translator, the Tsutina people believed Treaty 7 to be a peace treaty between the settlers and the various nations, rather than a land cessation one, as the Crown intended. With the signing of Treaty 7, the Tsutina people, known at this time as the Sarsi, were provided with two tracts of land, one was permanent and the other was to use over a 10-year period. However, the Tsutina people were meant to share the land with the Siksika nation whom they did not get along with. Sutina oral history states that Chief Bullhead sent out three scouts to the land between two rivers, that is Fish Creek and Elbow, an area that the chief knew was not occupied by anyone and was a good hunting ground, having been there before. He told the men to cross two beaver logs to indicate where the rest of his tribe should go. In order to ensure that the land remained theirs, understanding the settlers' tendency to take back unoccupied land, they built a house, which included the marking logs. Settler history states that in 1880, Chief Bullhead went to Colonel McLeod and informed him that the Tsutina people were starving, unable to live off the rations as they were not used to the wheat-based diet. Chief Bullhead said his tribe required more land to hunt but was denied. The Sarsi War consisted of Chief Bullhead slamming his fists on a general store's counter and staging a sit-in protest in downtown Calgary, where they then moved to, to a camp at Fort Calgary. Finally, he was granted new territory after refusing to return to the shared reserve land. Tsutina people reside on the reserve land that was chosen for them by Bullhead and the three scouts, and are really modernizing the areas close to Calgary having a sports arena, casino, an event center, and a Costco being built. This will help bring more money into the reserve. Though the stains of forceful assimilation still remain, the people of Tsutina Nation are working hard to put the land to better use. This includes building modern schools dedicated to educating children in a decolonized Indigenous ways, having museums dedicated to their history, as well as many language revival programs showing astounding resilience and determination to reclaim their culture.